हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम शांतनु योर कोच एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी द बेसिक कंसेप्ट्स ऑफ द रियल स्टेट इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट रेगुलेशंस वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इट थरली एज वी हैव कवर्ड दीज रेगुलेशन इन सिक्स पार्ट्स पार्ट ए टू एफ सो आपको सभी पार्ट एक एक करके देखने हैं और इसमें से एग्जाम में क्वेश्चन आने की चांसेस बहुत ही ज्यादा हैं First, let's see the introduction of these regulations. The name of these regulations: SEBI Real Estate Investment Trust Regulation, 2014. It is effective from 26th of September 2014, and there are total 34 regulations which are divided into nine chapters, and there are total seven schedules also attached to these regulations. There were major amendments made in these regulation by SEBI Real Estate Investment Trust Amendment Regulation 2016. There are so many amendments. We have covered almost all the amendments in these lectures. Apart from this 2016 amendment, there were a very small amendment in 2017 also. and we have covered that a uh, small amendment uh, which made in 2017 also now let's see the objective of these regulation why these regulations have been issued so the main objective of these regulation is to boost the capital market and the real estate market so ek hi teer se inhone do nishane lagaye hain pehla to inhone कैपिटल मार्केट है उसको बूस्ट करने के लिए रेगुलेशन इशू किए हैं एंड सेकेंडली जो रियल स्टेट सेक्टर है मार्केट है वो जो अभी लो है उसको बूस्ट करने के लिए भी ये रेगुलेशन इशू किए हैं हाउ इट विल वर्क वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू सी इन शॉर्ट टाइम बिफोर दैट जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंट्रोलिंग अथॉरिटी हु इज द मेन कंट्रोलिंग अथॉरिटी एज फार एज दीज रेगुलेशन आर कंसर्न SEBI that is the Security and Exchange Board of India is the main controlling authority and SEBI has issued these regulations now first we are going to see how this whole system of real estate investment trust will work because if you don't understand the basic concept of this you will not be able to understand the regulation completely so first try to understand the concept behind these regulations so as you are aware there are many 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 people or you can say investors so who want to invest in the property that is the real estate properties wo makano mein invest karna chahte hain but they don't want to stay in those houses but they want a return and so the main purpose of the investor here is to invest the money in real estate market and to earn income by two ways there are two means to earn the income by investing in real estate market one you can get the rent for it and second you can purchase at less and sell at more that is the capital gain income so there are two types of income one investor can earn by investing into the real estate market but the problem is that the prices of properties are going too high these prices are going in crores of rupees even a single property or row house and like that if you want to buy the prices are too high for normal investor to invest in such properties so assume that if a investor is having just 2 lakh rupees he cannot in present uh, situation cannot invest in the real estate because in 2 lakh he will not get anything in the real estate market so the basic idea behind these regulation is to give an opportunity to such persons who are not having enough money to invest into the real estate market but still they should be able to invest in this market and earn the income without getting into the trouble of managing the property so here the investor just need to invest the money into the rit that is the real estate investment trust 
so there will be a trust as per these regulations and these investors can invest small amounts in this real estate trust and this real estate trust will invest their money into the real estate market and will earn the income and will distribute such income to the investor so this is the main idea behind the real estate investment trust regulations now let's see how this a uh, whole system will work and who are the main players in these regulations so the first person you will see in this regulation is the sponsor sponsor is the person who gets the idea to set up a trust so sponsor you can understand sponsor is just like a promoters in case of a company who get the idea of incorporating the company similarly here the sponsor who gets the idea to form a trust and do all the necessary formalities completes the formalities and set up a trust and definitely he also invest money into the real estate trust along with the other investors now we are going to see this definition of sponsor uh, in detail later on but here you just have to understand this sponsor may be an individual like human being or it may be a body corporate so till now we have understood that there will be a one person it can be individual or body corporate who will be treated as sponsor and he is the person who will set up this trust means he will do all the necessary legal formalities to set up the trust and also appoint the trustee now second person who comes into the picture is the trustee since it is a trust so there will be a trustee and trustee is not a human being it will be a trustee as defined under the debenture trustee regulations this definition of trustee i have covered in the various parts that is the definition part so you can refer that definition later on the only thing you have to remember here that there will be a trustee and who will look after all the activities and operation of this trust so trustee will hold all the assets of the real estate investment trust for the benefit of the unit holder that is for the for the benefit of the investor investors are the persons who will be investing into the real estate trust that is they will buy the units of the trust remember in case of a company when we say company company issue the shares similarly in case of the trust the trust will issue the units against the money so these are the investor who will purchase the units of the trust and uh, the trust will get the money by issuing the unit and this money received by the trust will be invested into the real estate properties after that comes the role of manager manager is the most important key person in this uh, regulations it is again you have to remember that this manager cannot be an individual so manager means either it can be a company or it can be a llp or it can be a body corporate so clb you can remember that the manager will not be a individual or human being it will be either a company or llp or it can be a body corporate who will manage all the assets of the real estate investment trust and who will take the decision where to invest how to invest the money into the real estate market and the manager will be solely responsible for all the operational activities of this trust and this manager will work under the guidance and superintendence of the trustee now the manager can invest the funds into the real estate market either directly or there are other two players also the first is hold co it is also known as holding company but remember the definition of this hold co is totally different so you need not to refer the company is that hold co is basically a company or llp through which the real estate investment trust can invest into the real estate property so instead of directly investing the property into the real estate market 
the trust can invest into the properties through hold co similarly there is a special purpose vehicle also this is also a, either a company or llp through which the trust can invest into the real estate properties so you need not to worry about the detail uh, of these terms because all these terms we have covered in detail in the definition part of uh, these lectures so here we are just focusing on the basic idea now so the picture is clear that the sponsor will form or set up the trust trustee will look after this trust manager will be the main key person who will take uh, decision important decisions uh, regarding the investment and he will be solely responsible for all the operational activities this trust can invest in the real estate property either directly or through hold co or through spvs and there will be huge investors and remember there should be total minimum 200 uh, unit holder should be there uh, that uh, i am not going to discuss in detail here we will uh, we have already discussed this in uh, other parts of this lecture so you just have to remember here that the investor will be investing into the trust by purchasing the units and trust will get the money and will invest in the real estate market i directly or through hold co or sp now this trust will earn the income by investing it will earn, uh, earn the income and this income will be distributed to the investor now just roughly i am telling you 90% of the uh, uh, income should be distributed to the unit holder by the trust the detail provision i have already covered in the other parts of these lectures so we will see those in detail later on but the system will work like this the investor will invest their money into the trust by purchasing the units the manager will invest this funds into the real estate property will earn the rental income or other income and will distribute this income to the unit holder now before we start part a of these lectures let's just go through the various regulations which are divided into chapters one by one and then we will start our part a so here we are going to see the structure of these regulations that is sebi real estate investment trust regulations 2014 chapter 1 is the preliminary and it covers short title commencement and the regulation 2 that is the definition it contains a definition there are so many important definitions which can be asked in the exams also that is covered here then comes chapter 2 that is for registration of real estate investment trust here uh, regulation 3 to 8 are there so in chapter 2 we will see the registration of real estate investment trust eligibility criteria this is very 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 important then furnishing of further information then procedure for grant of certificate conditions of certificate and procedure where registration is refused by the board then we will see chapter 3 which covers the rights responsibilities of the parties to the writ valuer and auditor so regulation 9 to 13 are covered in chapter 3 9 talks about right responsibilities of the trustee then 10 talks about right responsibility of manager 11 of sponsor 12 of valuer and 13 of the auditor all these are very very important can be asked in the exam directly then comes chapter number 4 which covers the issue and listing of the units this is also important chapter where are total four regulations are there 14 to 17 so 14 covers the issue and allotment of unit 15 covers the offer documents and the advertisements 16 cover the listing and trading of units and 17 talks about the delisting of units then comes chapter 5 covers the investment condition related party transaction borrowing and valuation of assets this is very very important chapter there are although only four regulations but very very important regulations and mainly 
regulation 18 is very important investment condition and distribution policy we have covered in detail everything in the uh, upcoming parts then comes 19 that is related party transaction then borrowing and then 21 cover the valuation of asset this is also very important then comes chapter number six rights of unit holder general obligation disclosure and reporting this is also very important chapter where total five regulations are there 22 covers rights and meeting of the unit holder this is very 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 important uh, regulation 22 then comes 23 talks about disclosure this is also very important then 24 talks about submission of reports to the board and then 25 talks about the power to call for information and 26 is also important talks about maintenance of the records then comes chapter number 7 which covers the inspection is ke upar bhi question aa sakta hai where 27 to 31 regulations are there 27 talks about board's right to inspect 28 talks about notice should be served before inspection 29 talks about obligation of all the parties and rest and other associate person while inspection they should provide their support to the inspecting authority then comes 30 which talks about submission of report that is the inspection report to the board and 31 talks about communication of findings to the writ then come chapter number eight it is ju it just contain one regulation is not that important covers procedure for action in case of a default 32 liability for action in case of a default then comes chapter number nine which covers miscellaneous matters where regulation number 33 which talks about power of board to issue clarification and there is the amendment and in amendment uh, there is a new regulation which was inserted that is 33 3a this is a little bit important which we have covered in our uh, parts of these lectures and then comes 34 regulation which talks about amendment to other regulations now look at the schedules as i have already mentioned there are uh, total seven schedules in schedule one there is a form a and form b form a is basically covers the application format application format for grant of certificate of registration so whenever sponsors goes for registering the trust it should apply in form a form b is basically format of registration certificate the board will give the registration certificate in form b both these forms are given in schedule one schedule two covers the fee structure to be paid in respect of registration it is covered under schedule two schedule three covers the mandatory disclosures in initial offer document and follow-on offer document schedule 4 cover mandatory disclosures in the annual reports there will be annual report which will be uh, sent to the unit holder it talks about that then schedule 5 talks about mandatory minimum disclosures in the full valuation report so valuation is very very important in these regulations there are so many times valuation will be done by the valuer and what information what disclosure need to be given in the valuation report it is covered under schedule 5 schedule 6 talks about the code of conduct of the writ and the parties to the writ and schedule 7 talks about amendment to securities exchange board of india alternative investment fund regulation 2012 it means this schedule is basically is a schedule where other regulations amendment to other regulations have been done so this is covered under schedule 7 Thank you.